Hello and welcome to another tutorial in the Cocos 2DX Community Tutorial Series and in this tutorial we're going to look at how to recognize swipe gestures. Cocos 2DX unfortunately doesn't have swipe gestures built in but what it does have is gestures or what I should say detection systems in place to be able to listen for touch events. So from that you can easily create a little API that will allow you to detect swipe gestures. So let's just open up our project. I'll be generating a new project. It is essentially a blank one. I've removed pretty much everything. And what we're going to do is go to your hello world scene.h or any header um, for your scene. We're just going to create a few variables. We're going to do cocos 2 d colon colon size. I'm going to call it visible size and now we're going to do the touch events so we're going to do ball we're just going to do single touch not multi-touch but you can incorporate using multi-touch if you really need to touch began and in here we're going to do cocos 2d colon colon touch now we already have separate tutorials for touch and if you want to check them out you can but this tutorial will just quickly cover writing them out from scratch and what we're also going to do is let's paste this I'm going to change the balls to void and just change these names slightly we're just going to change untouch began to untouch mood here then untouch began to untouch ended finally untouch began to untouch cancelled so now the next step is to create a boolean variable which we'll call is touch down basically is the screen being touched now we're going to create a couple of arrays and we're going to do float initial touch pod basically the initial touch position so index 0 will be x index 1 will be y what we're going to do is just copy and paste this change initial to current so we keep track of where we are currently swiping or currently moving our finger to then we're going to finally implement or declare an update method which will be run every frame do float dt inside and now if we go to our hello world scene.cpp what we need to do first of all is just initialize our visible size to director colon colon get instance get visible not origin size semicolon and then we do auto listener so this will be the listener to detect touches equal to event listener touch one by one colon colon create semicolon and now we do listener set swallow touches to true and now we do listener on touch began equals cc underscore callback basically this number just represents how many variables this particular callback takes so if we look at hello world scene they take Two, so we obviously use the cc underscore callback underscore two. For the selector, we're going to put hello world colon colon on touch began. And for the target, we're just going to put this because it's this scene. Now we can just copy and paste this. I'm going to take change began to ended here. Actually, we'll do it moved in the same order as we declared them, then ended cancelled and now we can just assign the right function so moved ended cancelled and now the next step is to do director colon colon get instance get event dispatcher add 
event listener we've we've seen graph priority and um, we're gonna put a listener the listener and of, and for the node we are going to put this now we put a semicolon now what we're going to do is initialize is touched down to false because we initially are on touching the screen then we're going to initialize the initial touch position to initial touch pause equals zero uh, for index zero and index one will be the same put a space between there and now what we're going to do the final part in the init method is to schedule our update so schedule update semicolon now the next step is to go void hello world update hello dt and now what we're going to do is if we're going to check if the screen is being touched so true double o equals is touched down then within here we are going to basically check has the swipe gone left has it gone right has it gone up or has it gone down so we're going to do if initial touch pause zero minus current touch pause zero greater than visible size dot width time by 0 0.05 so let's just quickly go over what we've done here and this is basically to detect if swipe has occurred left and what we're checking is the initial touch position so imagine if that is here somewhere and then we're checking if the current I mean the difference between the initial touch position and the current touch position is greater than basically a swipe threshold a swipe amount and that swipe amount we're, we're doing it in relationship to the actual size of the screen which is what you want to do because imagine if you have a an ipad retina and you have a regular iphone so 480 by 320 or 320 by 480 depending on how you're holding it if you weren't to do this and you were to just say i don't know five pixels on an ipad retina that swipe will be a lot shorter visibly than it will be on an iPhone because there's more pixels or there's less pixels depending on what it was. Whereas this, you'll get a consistent experience throughout. So we're checking the difference and we're checking is it greater than the visible size dot width time by 0 0.05. So what we're going to do in here, we're just going to simply do a CC log. And we're going to say swiped left is touchdown equals to false because our swipe has now finished then we're going to do else if and in here we're going to do initial touch pause zero minus current touch pause zero is less than minus visible size dot width time by 0 0.05 and this essentially checks has this swipe occurred but right so cc log swiped right do is touch down equal to false and now what we can do is simply copy and paste this And we will put an else if here. We we'll change all these zeros to a one because we're now we're going to check for up or down, aka the y axis, which is stored in the index one for initial touch position and current touch position. And we're going to change this to swiped down because this is swiping it down, and this to swiped up. Uh, we are swiping it up now. You might think this is ready to run, no it isn't, simply because we haven't actually stored the touch positions when the user has touched the screen. For that we need to actually implement the touch function. So, so we'll do that now, so bool, hello world, 
on touch began and in here we're going to do touch asterisk touch comma event asterisk event and we're just simply going to copy and paste this so it's a little easier I'm going to change this to void change this to void change this to void Ooh, and I say bovo void that is not a keyword in programming in general. So on touch begin will now become on touch moved. On touch ended. On touch cancelled, and the cancelled we're just gonna call the on touch ended simply because we just want the same functionality if a touch has ended. Basically, I don't know if a system alert comes up, for example. So. Sorry about that. And so if we just go to our on touch began method, we're gonna do initial touch pause zero equals touch get location dot x. I'm gonna copy and paste this. Change this to a one, change this to a y. We're gonna copy and paste this again. I'm going to do current because obviously if, even though the initial touch position has been stored initially the current touch position is also the same as the initial touch position and we're just going to put is touchdown equal to true to return true as this function requires a return type of boolean then in on touch moved, we are simply going to do this again. Store the new updated current touch value. And for the on touch ended, we are simply going to put is touch down equals to false semicolon. And now I believe we are ready to run. Okay, so no compilation errors. Hopefully we have no runtime errors and it works. Okie dokie, so what we're gonna do is click, swipe right, we swiped right, it says we have swiped right, click, swipe left. It says we've swiped left, click, swipe down. It says we've swiped down, click, swipe up. It says we've swiped up. But what if you notice, if I click and I just sort of wiggle the mouse around or as it will be your finger on a device, it doesn't do any swap gestures. Basically, there's a little leeway here, which is that visible size dot width time by 0 0.05. And that basically just says it, if the swipe has occurred and it is 5% of the, vis I mean, the visible size width then it is an actual swipe and we store or we print out which direction so if we do now left the left up down right left down up right 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 so that's it for swipe it's that simple it's got to implement it this isn't the only way to do swap, there are other ways. Another way you can do it, depending on your needs and the sort of game you're creating. If you take, for example, Candy Crush or other games of that nature, what they do is when you click on an item, so I'm just going to call it a candy because we're using the Candy Crush game as an example. You click on a candy and you swipe, it doesn't actually. Sorry, it doesn't actually submit it as a swipe gesture until the touch has ended not while the touch is still moving but until the touch has ended and it only does the other swipe gesture if the current touch ends up or ends in a candy that is basically next to it so left right up or down so if you do it i don't know somewhere else it won't detect it so that's it for i mean uh, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystem.co.uk. The link for the email will be in the description. 
Also, you can comment on this video or directly message us via YouTube. Also, the source code from this tutorial will also be in the description. And as usual, thanks for watching and have a nice day.